All right, so I just wanted to make a video about uh, my diesel heater build here. Um, it's uh, just a Chinese diesel heater. You know by now probably if you're watching videos, they're pretty much all the same. This is a five kilowatt. Um, I essentially did a clone of the uh, YouTuber uh, Keegan builds. Um, I liked his design. Um, I had a Harbor Freight uh, box and uh, he uh, has the files for all of his stuff on Thingiverse. So anything green, um, that's essentially a part, you know, a part that I printed on my printer. He actually sells the parts too, but um, really cool guy seems like. I've never met him, but uh, he uh, put his STLs up on Thingiverse for free. So really cool. Um, I super appreciate that. Um, so um, right now I've got this running on uh, basically like 60-40 kerosene diesel. Um, diesel just to lube the pump, kerosene to burn clean. I know it won't burn quite as hot, but uh, it works. Um, so this is the essential idea. I would suggest look up his build and channel. It's like uh, the videos like DIY heater in a box, something along those lines. But Keegan diesel heater, you'll find it. Um, so uh, things that I had questions about before I built this uh, that I couldn't really find online and he didn't cover were, um, and, and he had run his for many, see, I think seasons and it worked good for him. So I trusted that. That's why I built, got to this point here where I built the whole thing. So I was a little doubtful, a little bit worried about, you know, um, would things start to melt? Um, PLA starts to soften. Um, everything's kind of closed up in the box. I was worried about what does the temperature in the box get to. So essentially uh, here I'll pull up my remote, have it load. So right now the blue controller is in the box. It reads temperature. So it says it's 16 degrees Celsius in there. I have my fluke meter. Um, it's on the temperature setting and I have a wire. So underneath here I have some holes I actually drilled a hole there I thought I was gonna run my fuel line out there um, ended up actually poking a few more holes in there um, to help vent it and uh, down on the bottom I have a couple of holes in case like I have it out in a rainstorm and I'm uh, got it going in my tent uh, if somehow rain got in the box I want it to drain out so I have a couple of holes drilled on the bottom in the lowest spot so it worked out nicely. I can put my temp probe all the way up in there. So I have my, the controller sits right about here. It says it's about 16 degrees like I showed. I, I've had it going now for about almost, well, several hours actually now at this point. Um, and um, I've got this probe and it should be snaked in the box all the way up to right about here. So um, for us American people, Fahrenheit, um, that's, as you see, about 50, 56, 57. So that's where one of my holes in the box is. Um, see if I can get it in this next hole um, down here. Yep, there we go. Sorry about the shaky video. So anyways, there it is in another spot in the box, and that lines up nicely with the uh, with the controller. So fairly accurate. I trust the fluke meter a lot more. Um, so um, so, anyways, that's some uh, info I wanted, and uh, also just to show that is on the hottest setting, and it has been going on that setting now for as I said, uh, on the hottest setting for at least an hour. Um, so over here on this side, um, the exhaust, just to show how hot the exhaust gets, it gets toasty. I've seen uh, that go up above 500, well, that's Celsius right now, 235 degrees Celsius for us Fahrenheit folks. 460 like I said I've seen that temperature yeah there it goes if I hold the probe 
depending on kind of how I lay the probe on the exhaust, how much of the wire contacts it. It's it's hot, so um, I'll try to do Fahrenheit and Celsius since I know I've, a lot of people are across the pond. Um, so those were some vent holes. I have a computer fan in there. I guess I didn't clarify that. Um, again, reference his video for that. I'll open this up here in a second and show the hole inside. But um, so inside here. Uh, I've got the probe in, oh, you can see it's, I've got it in the box a good six inches there. So we're sitting at 135. And about 50 degrees, uh, it kind of started to fall out there. So um, here's your Fahrenheit, or Celsius. So depending on where I put this in this side, um, if I put it right against the exhaust, but I, I'm very surprised. Uh, that's a lot lower temperature than I was honestly expecting. So um, I've seen those numbers kind of fluctuate, you know, within oh, somewhere around 10 degrees Celsius. So in the garage right now, it should be right around, uh, I just have this just sitting right here to kind of get an air intake temperature, kind of gauge its performance. Um, it, once it gets cooled down, well, it's warmed up in here now that I've got it going. So, uh, when I started this morning, it was, uh, below 40 now that I've had this going. Uninsulated garage, so, um, yeah, we'll say that's, we'll say 45 degrees. We'll come over here, measure the outlet temperature, just have the probe there, um, inside there I've seen this number usually right around yeah 170 180 190 again it just kind of depends on where I put the probe um, what it touches and contacts so there's your Celsius 82 let's wiggle it around see what we get 85 yeah so the hottest I've seen on this was about 190 yeah, there it is. Oh, there we go. So yeah, anyways, that gives you an idea, a rough idea of some of the performance numbers. Um, and then as far as the inside of the box goes, and uh, I'm just going to turn this down because it will be louder once I open this up. So if the fan is what makes all the noise. So, I'll just turn this down so that we can get some... These controllers, you, they're, they're a bit fiddly. It seems to work okay, but you kind of have to push the button slow and steady. It doesn't like quick pushes. <laughs> but, there we go. We'll open this up. Sorry about the video. One-handed here. All right. <laughs> Okay, so here is my setup. Again, I said anything this green silk, that's what that color is called. It was just what I had loaded in the machine. So uh, this coupler, as you can see, it offsets, which makes it much easier to fit this. And um, you can kind of rotate that. It gives you some play there so that this then can mount below this lip so just lines things up real nice again I am not a designer or good with that sort of stuff so that was a that was very nice to have those STLs just to download and plug them in so there's the computer fan um, he has a whole parts list in his video so again I would take a look at his video um, got the blue controller the new controller <laughs> Um, this air intake, all it is is just a plastic thing with a bunch of holes drilled in it. Since there were some holes on this end and those kind of get a little bit covered up, I drilled some more holes and then I took a big chunk of uh, foam 
that wasn't like tight mesh foam shoved it in there so that it actually has an air filter that way if like an ant crawls up in there uh, or just, I don't know dust something hopefully it'll get a little bit of that out of there and not get it in the intake so this I have this exhaust tubing it's like a sleeve again check out his video he's got all the parts I have that sleeve on there and then I have motorcycle header wrap wrapped around that um, and uh, I can actually it's crazy how well that stuff works I can actually touch that so that is what is putting all of this heat outside of the box there's no way I would touch this I would get an immediate burn as you saw that was that was 500 degrees so it's really impressive that I can even just hold on to that for that amount of time so let's actually see what kind of a temperature I'm gonna put that right on there 160 to 170 degrees so that really keeps the heat out of the box so um, fuel pump you can see my fuel line back over here nice and clean uh, comes through the box right there really happy with how that turned out this is a Briggs & Stratton cheapo lawnmower filter uh, they have a lot finer mesh than what came with the fuel pump um, this is like 150 micron is what it was advertised as I busted one of these open to look at the mesh inside just to see how it compared to the one that these come with and it is much much finer so I'd recommend not using theirs uh, I don't think their filter is really much of a filter it's more of like a I don't know a bug screen um, but anyways I like the way that he mounted the pump on the box and if you mount it in this position you can run it as how I have it uh, in the box so the wiring for this is coming out on the bottom I put a rubber spacer it was actually just a grommet for what you use to run wires through through like a sheet metal firewall in a car um, I put that underneath there just to set the box up it's basically just a spacer about this big to hold the box up just a wee bit so that it's not resting on the cord you know, rubbing it off over time causing issues so um, but what that gets you is the glow plug is now on the top up here. So um, specs for these heaters, glow plug needs to be on the top if you're gonna run the heater on its side like this. So that's important. Um, so the nice thing about mounting the pump up here is that I can run the box like this if I need to, diagnostics, anything, you know, whatever. Um, it's just kind of fun to look at too. So if I wanted to run it like this, I can or I can run it how I had it in the beginning of the video. So um, those were just some some cool things uh, that I liked about this design. Um, so um, next, things that I wanted to look at uh, that I didn't have a good answer for. Um, uh, let's see here. Clear out zero my amp meter. So I am going to crank this. All the way up um, I think that covers pretty much everything here in the box um, over here it's just uh, three inch um, mass airflow or what, what was it called air box flange I think they're just aluminum air box flanges just that right there got those mounted on each side this is actually some three inch silicone uh, this boost pipe actually off an old Subaru I had um, I had some extra laying around so I didn't use this junkier cardboard hose I just thought if I'm gonna spend all the time doing this I'd recommend doing that it's uh, it's a lot nicer a lot cleaner of an install using the rubber hose uh, rubber tubing on both ends ends up being quite a bit nicer so uh, here we go millimeters zeroed out so that is this thing running on high usually it's uh, it's somewhere around this yeah 3.8 to 4 4 amps um, 
So, that was another thing. You can find that on a lot of different videos. Uh, but uh, it was... And that would be what I'd be running it on to heat my uninsulated garage. Now, if I'm going to go camping and I'll be out in a tent where I will need this to last on a battery for at least, you know, eight hours. Probably wouldn't run it on that setting. This is a 46 amp hour um, Optima yellow top, uh, which is a deep cycle and starting battery. So these uh, would do relatively well in that application. So on 3.1 hertz, we're pulling 1.6 amps. So 46 amp hour battery. Uh, that'll easily get me all the way through a night. Should be able to run it at least 10 hours. You obviously can't get all your 46 amp hours out of a battery. Um, I don't know what the exact number would be. Somebody probably does, or there's probably a chart somewhere. But uh, I would guess I can get easily uh, uh, probably 25 amp hours out of the battery. So easily could get my 10 hours runtime. I have a way that uh, with some heavy gauge cables and Anderson plugs that I can mount this battery in the back of my Xterra and plug it in and uh, charge it up while I'm driving around during the day. So that's all I need. If I was going to go camping for longer amount of time, I've got uh, a bigger 109 amp hour deep cycle that I can use. So anyways, uh, those are just some of the things I had questions about when I was getting this thing built. and. Uh, didn't find answers online, so figured I would just make a short little video. Um, hopefully, help somebody out, maybe answer questions or give design ideas. So, um, oh, and uh, the fan that is wired in permanently. When this is plugged in, the fan is going. The fan. I also uh, measured that the fan is pulling uh, right around 0.6 amps. So add that in. Um, I was act or no, it was not 0.6 amps. Let's see if I can get a reading on that. I don't know if I'll be able to. It was 0 0.06 is the reading I was thinking. So um, very low draw. Uh, think I don't know if that's uh, there might be some uh, some different weird electrical things happening there that wouldn't be an accurate reading because that doesn't seem right but um, yeah I'll have to look up the specs on that fan and see but anyways the fan is negligible um, I uh, I'd be able to run this even if I turn this off in the middle of the night I'm not gonna get out of the tent to unplug it I don't care it'll it, that fan would be able to run weeks on that battery so um, pretty negligible um, but I feel like the fan really does help keep the, the, the box cool um, so um, I'd consider not doing it but I'm glad I did but the heat wrap I think that's the the biggest thing so do that maybe do what I did do a couple of different layers um, seems to work well so um, thanks for watching. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, there's probably a lot more, more detailed videos uh, for other builds and designs, but um, I, uh, aside from Keegan's videos and uh, another couple of guys' videos, there wasn't a whole lot on this specific har Harbor Freight build, and um, I just had a few questions, so figured I'd make a video with the answers I wish I had when I started. Anyways, thanks for watching.